Hello, this is Roger, a product manager here at Humanware in charge of our low vision solutions. Today, I'm going to show you how to activate a new or upgraded Connect 12 or Mac Connect tablet. So here you can see my tablet is powered on already um, and it's on the first screen. Like many uh, personal computing devices, the first time you use your tablet, you will need to initialize it by going through a wizard. I want to point out a couple of things uh, before we get started with the wizard. And the first and most important thing is in the bottom center of the screen, you will see some vision settings uh, that you'll want to employ if you require uh, additional supports visually or auditorily throughout the activation process. So uh, tapping that will open a list. Uh, the very first option is font size. I'm going to go ahead and open that uh, on the right there and tap it. Um, and that will present a drawbar on the lower right that I'm going to drag over and turn text presentation or fonts to their largest size for while I use the wizard. Then I'll tap the done button on the lower right there. Uh, the next option on the list is display size. I'm going to tap that. Uh, and here what will change is images and so forth as they're presented on the screen. In this case, I'm going to go to a larger size, not quite the largest. Again, drawing uh, by touch that uh, scroll bar to the right, and I'll tap done. Uh, now you'll notice actually that my settings are larger on the screen. There are three additional settings that you may wish to uh, use. One is a magnifier tool, which will open on the right and allow you to activate and magnify areas of the screen. Select to speak, which will allow you to tap on an item and have it read back. And then you can also turn on talk back where anything that appears on the screen uh, can be spoken aloud to you during that process. Um, I'm just going to stick with my font size and display size changes right now. And in the lower left, you'll see a back arrow that will take us back to the main screen. Uh, the other option that you'll want to use, if necessary, is the language uh, at the top here, just under high there. Um, I'll tap that and you will see that there are many, many languages that you can have your interface set up in all the way down to uh, Polish even. I'll scroll back to the top here. I'm going to leave mine on English United States uh, because that's the language that I speak and I'm familiar with. And at this point, I'm now ready to go ahead and tap that start button in the center of the screen and get started with activation process. The first step of the process is to get hooked up to a Wi-Fi network. Now you'll notice on the bottom left that there is a setup offline option. However, in best practice, it is good to go ahead and get connected to Wi-Fi as it will be used uh, in the setup process, especially at the end when we go ahead and activate Prodigy fully. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and select my uh, very funnily named Not Your Network here. Um, and I'm going to be asked to put in my password. So uh, my virtual keyboard will pop up and I'll go ahead and input my password. With my password input, I can now click the check mark on my virtual keyboard or I can tap connect in the dialog for my password, which I'll push on. We'll go off and get the IP address and authentication and so forth and get connected to the Wi-Fi. Uh, if that happens successfully, uh, we're going to drop right into getting the tablet ready. And this can take anywhere from two to three minutes. So just be patient and let the tablet and Android do their thing. And it always seems longer than it actually is. Uh, it only took about a minute there. Um, so the next step of the process is to copy apps and data, if you'd like, from another tablet or device. Um, and if you would like to do that, you will tap the next in the lower right. Uh, note that this can be done wirelessly or via a wired connection, but it does take some time, uh, especially if done wirelessly. And it does happen in the background, so it may affect uh, your processing speed for other activities that you may undertake. Um, to be a little bit faster today, in the lower uh, left corner here, I'm going to tap on don't copy and continue on with my setup. So Android will go off and do a few more things in the background here, and we'll just be patient. That took about 10, 15 seconds tops. Uh, so now we're going to be asked, who's going to use this device? Now, if you're setting it up solely for the use of a child, you might like to do that. But 
very frequently, uh, the Connect 12 or the Mac Connect is used in a school environment or by an adult user. Um, and in the case of a school, you can even use the account that you're setting up now as the administrative account and create additional uh, Android-based profiles and so forth afterwards. So uh, in most cases, you're going to choose an adult or a teen, which is what I'll select now. Again, a little bit more setup takes place in the background. Next up, we'll go ahead and associate a Google account. Again, uh, you'll notice here that you can skip uh, that at if you'd like to. Um, but again, sort of best practices to go ahead and take care of that now. So I'm gonna tap in the box uh, there. My virtual keyboard will come up. Oh, missed a letter there. We'll input our email name and press that forward button. And the next thing is we will be asked to enter our password. So I'll go ahead and do that as well with the virtual keyboard. And with the password typed in, I'll again tap that forward arrow in my virtual keyboard and we'll get my Google account associated. And I don't know if you heard that, but I do have uh, two-factor authentication set up on my Google account. So my other device is asking me to verify that it is in fact me. So we'll take care of that right now. My device is here and I'm going to tap on the screen where it says, yes, it's me. It takes place almost immediately. Uh, we will move on to the next step, which is Google Terms of Service. Uh, so you can still back out of adding this account right now if you'd like on the left there, um, but I'm going to go ahead and agree to Google's Terms of Service. This will take just a moment. Uh, some more account information will be associated to my tablet. It took about 20 seconds or so. Uh, and now I will look at my Google services and I have the opportunity on the right here to review and disable them if I'd like. So the first is to use basic device backup, if you'd like, I'm gonna leave that on. Use location, I'm gonna use that on. Allow scanning uh, for Wi-Fi and so forth and Bluetooth, I'm gonna leave that on. Send usage and diagnostic data, uh, we'll leave that on. Install updates and apps, we'll leave that on as well. Um, so again, you can choose to turn anything off that you'd like, and then I will tap accept in the lower right. There we go. Uh, the next screen is to uh, select a pin. Now this again, uh, there's a skip option on the left there, um, but uh, it's actually good to have because then when your tablet is to sleep or shut down and it comes back on, you alone will know the password to get into the device and make any changes to it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a pin for my tablet right now. With a pin created, I'll tap next and I'll be asked to re-enter it to make sure that we have the right pin. I re-enter my pin and I'll tap the forward arrow this time and that will uh, encode it into my system and we move on to the next step. At this step, we'll ask uh, to set up Hey Google if we would like and in this instance, if you choose to use it, uh, you can see on the right here, you'll be asked to repeat some phrases so that your tablet uh, and Google will learn your voice. Um, if you agree, you'll be put through that. Uh, to be expedient today, I'm going to choose skip in the lower left here. Um, and then you are going to be asked, uh, do you want to access your assistant without unlocking your device? So if you had set that up a moment ago, um, you would be able to still get into it even if you haven't used your pin code to get into your device because I haven't set it up. I'm going to tap skip in the lower left here. We're almost there. A little more setup taking place in the background. After about 10 seconds or so, we're presented with a pay faster with Google Pay. Um, and again, uh, in most cases, we're using these uh, in schools or at work and so forth. But if it is a personal account, uh, then you may want to go ahead and add a card in the lower right. Um, but for today, I am going to skip this as well. And we have reached the end of the Android setup wizard here. So the question is, is there anything else that you would like to change or set up right now? Um, add another email account, change font size, change wallpaper, control info on lock screen, uh, any of those things. Uh, I'm going to choose no thanks uh, here in the lower left, and we will finalize the setup of our tablet. Next, we will choose a home app, and hopefully uh, for your Connect 12 or your Mac Connect, you would want to have our Prodigy software um, as your home application, which basically means anytime that you turn it on, it's going to come up in Prodigy, as well as if you hit the circle button or the home button in your Android interface, it's going to bring you back to your Prodigy application, which will be your, your low vision software. We'll want to set that as always, most likely. And now we're done with the uh, wizard in terms of Android setup. Next up, um, 
uh, for your Mac connector, your Connect 12 is to configure Prodigy for the first time. So we'll tap continue and you're going to be asked some questions. The first thing we need to do is make sure that it is up to date and ready to go. So we're going to ask about the Prodigy updater. Uh, do you want to use the device's location? Like most things, when I see this, I usually say, okay, while I'm using the app, you can. Um, allow Prodigy Updater access photo, media, files, and so forth on your device. Because it will be performing updates and installs and so, sort of things, uh, go ahead and allow that. Oh, let me tap that again. There we go. So we'll check your license, make sure that it's been purchased and everything is valid. In this case, it is. Uh, next option, uh, if you've purchased a distance camera or you already own one if you're upgrading, uh, is to go ahead and pair that if you'd like to. To be quick today, I'm going to skip this for now. We'll now check for updates. And here again, this is why uh, setting up that Wi-Fi connection previous, uh, previously in the uh, Android wizard uh, is very helpful because this will allow us to go ahead and install updates that are available right now. So the first thing we need to do is go off and get them and download them. So we'll let this happen. You can see that there are four of them uh, to be added. And we are wrapping up the download, and then we will immediately jump into the installation. Again, depending upon the size of the updates, this could take a while or not. So we'll just let it do its thing. But again, this is important because since the tablet shipped from the factory, there's always the possibility that updates have been released and are available. So we'll just let it do its thing. Okay, the installation is wrapping up. Uh, in total, I would say that was probably about a minute and a half to two minutes to get through the entire installation of the updates, uh, but time well spent. Uh, so now we have Prodigy updated uh, and we're gonna wrap up the install here. Uh, so now we're asking about Prodigy, the software itself, not the updater, which were the prior questions. So it's asking, do we wanna allow Prodigy to take pictures and record video? Of course, uh, we use Prodigy uh, to do OCR by capturing images and so forth. So we definitely want to say while using the app, you can use that. Um, do you want to allow Prodigy to access the device's location? Again, uh, as I normally do, I'll select while using the app. Uh, to allow uh, Prodigy to find its, uh, connect to position to nearby devices. Uh, probably important to go ahead and allow this as we use uh, Wi-Fi cameras and Bluetooth uh, keyboards and so forth. Uh, so we'll go ahead and allow that also. Uh, lastly, allow Prodigy to access photos, media files on the device. I'm going to go ahead and allow that as well so that it can save. Um, and then next up, we need to get some voices on here. By default, Prodigy does not install with voices in place because we want to allow you to choose that. Uh, so on this screen, you can see the ability to choose voices. You can scroll down and see the different voices that are available from French all the way on down to Turkish. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go into English here, tap that, um, and I will choose to install Heather, uh, United States. Uh, you may want to be knowing that you can actually install up to four voices at any given time. So you could go in and select other languages or whatever if you'd like. I'm just going to go with one for today. And in the upper right of my screen here, I'm going to tap the send button and go off and uh, download and install that voice. So the download is completed and it will immediately go into updating voices and uh, we'll just allow that process to take place and we'll be up and running here shortly. The extraction of the OCR application takes just a couple of moments. In this case, we'll be extracting English because I selected an English voice. We'll check your license again to validate it. And voila, we have Prodigy fully installed on our Connect 12 or Mac Connect. So let's go ahead and test out our magnifier really quickly by placing a document underneath. And there you can see we've got a document down there ready to go. So I'll hit the back button. We're back into Prodigy here and we have successfully now uh, activated Android, associated a Google account attached to our internet connection here and have installed Prodigy with voices and we're ready to start using our Connect 12 or Mac Connect new tablet. Uh, thanks for watching our video today. And as always, please be sure to send us any feedback on how we can improve our software prodigy here or the Connect 12 Mac Connect in general. Uh, we're always listening and uh, looking to become better uh, at what we do. Uh, so thanks again uh, and be on the lookout for other videos to support your use of our products.